How's it going, folks? And welcome back. It's episode number 57 of Park 2 Primera. We are back for another doubleheader, and it's a big doubleheader today. We are going to be taking on, uh, if we just look here, uh, Leon in the Champions League, and then following on from that, we've got a game against Atleti. Now, originally, I wasn't sure if we were going to come back for this due to recent revelations that we're going to cover in the next few minutes. We're coming back today because today we could end up securing our safe package. Package? No, passage. There's no package involved here. Not on YouTube, but leave, well, leave it at that. Um, look, <laughs> we can ensure our safe passage uh, through to the knockout stages of the Champions League today with a win against Leon. That is because we possibly got our best result ever. And you know what? I'm not doing this in chronological order, but let's just talk about it. We beat Manchester United at Old Trafford. Now, did we deserve to win? Probably not. We had two shots on target in the entire game. Am I going to complain? No. Siapina got us off to a great start, and not long later on into the first half we went, we got a goal through an unlikely source. Brian Heal. Yeah, remember him? Spanish winger? Bit of a backup? Bit of an enigma? He scored there, made it 2-0. Um, we did have a bit of an unfortunate goal that we conceded here with, uh, well, Brian giving it short to Perez. Hannibal, uh, we won't sing the song, but if you watch on Twitch, you already know about Medjbury. Uh, he got the assist, and unfortunately for us, Latoro Martinez scored. Um, when a man like Latoro Martinez scores against you, you do start to panic. What I would say is, it was a good job they, they didn't have Erling Haar. Otherwise, it could have been a much trickier game. Anyway, besides that, we've played some games in the league as well. Let's talk about those. Of course, last time out, we had the game where we drew 2-2 against United. And immediately after that, we won against Real Sociedad. 6-0, Siapina got a hat-trick. Um, yeah, things you love to see, this. Siapina developing a hell of a lot, so much so, he's wanted by Leipzig. They can jog on. There is no way this man is leaving us. He is such a great forward, so well-rounded, consistent performer, nine goals in the league, and uh, yeah, this 6-0 humiliation felt pretty good to dish out. Now, the two games that followed were two more convincing wins, this time against Elche and Getafe. Last year, Getafe were a bit of a surprise package. They started the season strong and then they completely fell off a cliff. This year, they've just completely fallen off a cliff. They're down in 18th. They are struggling a hell of a lot. You can see they were kind of on a steady rise. Last year, they ended up finishing 17th, but I think after maybe 15 games, they were in the top four. Um, but nevertheless... Good to beat them. And also, Kike Sanchez Flores is their manager. Uh, make, make of that what you will. So after those three wins in the league, we had the game against United. And coming out of that, I thought Sevilla, Valencia, either side of an international break. It could be more difficult games. At the same time, they could have been slightly more simple. You can see we managed to win against Valencia 2-0. Great to keep a clean sheet. Not really had enough of those. Siapina and Mejica with the goals in this one. And while well, following on from that, a 0-0 draw against Sevilla... It's not great, and in this game, and I don't want to throw him under the bus, but I have to, Mahika missed an 82nd minute penalty. Maybe this is what I get for not starting him enough, but I thought at this moment, you can imagine, Mahika stepping up. He's going to score. Obviously, he's going to score. No, sorry, yeah. Fantastic saving goal, to be fair. So with all those results, this is how the league table looks. We are three points behind Barcelona, and one thing to note that didn't really dawn on me until after we beat United 2-1, We've not lost this season. Like in any competition, ignore pre-season. Pre-season was, I don't, know what, I don't know what happened there. I'm going to be honest. But ignore pre-season. In competitive games this year, we're unbeaten. And I don't quite know how we've managed it. Considering the opposition that we've had to take on, we are just proving to be a very difficult team to beat. You can see, looking through these games, there's not too many results where we concede more than a single goal, which obviously, um, given our attacking instincts, you expect us to get at least a goal in every single game, I feel like. And for the most part, we've managed to do that and then some. As a result, we are going strong, but it is for the first time in a little while, a proper battle at the top of La Liga. You can see last year, Real Madrid finished six points clear. The year before that, they were 14 points clear of ourselves in second. This year, you've got the top four, and uh, well, we are separated by a grand total of six points. It's very, very close, and as I already mentioned, we are going to be taking on Atleti today. So, a chance for us to dispatch of them, get them further behind, as the team currently chasing in fourth place. And while speaking of our recent performances, I think a nice little part of the new skin that we'll be releasing soon to acknowledge 
is the attacking efficiency and defensive efficiency graphs under the stats bomb page on the home screen. You can see here Barcelona leading the way when it comes to aggressive clinical attacks. As for ourselves, uh, we've been very, very aggressive. We're lacking a little bit of the clinical edge that I would like to see. I'd love to see us score more of our opportunities, but we are looking very, very good this year. And even more so impressively, I suppose, from a defensive perspective, we are sat right alongside Atleti as just a quiet, impenetrable team that are more than solid defensively. Um, as I said, defensively, we've been great this year. We don't concede too many at all. Uh, our expected goals against, as you can see here, is 10.2. Now, considering that we are 14 games into the year and we've conceded fewer than 10 goals, I think we've conceded nine off the top of my head. I now want to check. How good is your memory, Jack? It's brilliant, apparently. Um, and of course, three of those were conceded against Barcelona. Um, we're really finding quite a good balance, I feel like. Sometimes in a save game, and it might just be me, you have a team that can score a load and concedes a load or can't score and can't really defend or can defend. Does that make sense? Basically, it's kind of one or the other. We've somehow managed to strike a balance and I do feel like a large part of that success is down to the 4 2 3 one that we've been using. A bit of an asymmetric style with the defensive midfielder. Um, I've been really, really happy with how things have gone so far. Now, in today's opening game, we're going to be taking on Leon. As I already alluded to, a win here against Leon, and we are guaranteed a spot in the Champions League knockouts, which would be absolutely fantastic. If we were to slip up here, um, it would go down to the final game against Napoli. That said, I would kind of back us to beat Napoli. Um, I think that is well, well, well within our reach. Uh, you can see last time we met Leon, we drew 1-1. So a scoreless draw because of head-to-head -head would still ensure that we go through. That said, I want to get some goals today. We're not playing for a nil-nil. So in terms of the team for today's game, just a little bit of rotation needed. Jonathan Martinez struggling with his fitness. Uh, I don't really want to risk him unnecessarily. So Brian Hill is going to go out and play on the left-hand side for us. In this kind of season thus far, it's been where he's played most of his games. His average rating there isn't too good, although I think a few of those games have been coming on off the bench. But nevertheless, two goals, three assists from out on the left. You saw against United, he got that all-important goal. We'll hope he can replicate that. And we'll, well, with that move... With him coming in on the left, that does mean that Avramides is going to go out onto the right-hand side. I'd probably rather play him on the left, but when we did play him on the right, he got two assists. So for the second time this season, we're going to play him there. Hopefully we can get similar returns. Elsewhere in the team, we are looking really, really solid. Zivkovic has had a really good upturn in form as of late. I've been very, very happy. Um, whilst his overall season performance doesn't look like anything to scream and shout about yet, he has given me reasons for optimism and reasons to believe that he can be our right back going forward. So anyway, let's get into this game. Leon are a team that I do think we should be beating. I've got quite high expectations of ourselves. Um, we drew nil. No, we didn't draw nil. No, we drew 1-1 against them away from home. I feel like we're way better at home. So logically, we're of course going to win this. I say all of this. We're probably going to lose this now. I'm just jinxing it. I'm just jinxing it at this point. What am I doing? Uh, we've got a corner here. Brian is going to whip it in. Galaretta's there, headed just the wrong side of the post. That was a really early chance. Caught me out how quick it came into the game. Free kick for us, I think, in a dangerous area here. Who is going to be over this? It's going to be Pablo. He's been Mr. Assister. Can he turn Mr. Goalscorer? Of course he blooming can. I thought that free kick might be a little too close to goal, a little difficult to get it over and, uh, well, over the wall and under the, under the crossbar. In the end... He's taken it perfectly. The wall didn't really do its job. I feel bad for the goalkeeper, but we shouldn't feel bad for them for too long because, well, I'd like another goal and we need to win this one. We've got to dish out our defeat and while Siapina heads it down, Ryan Hill probably should have finished that there, but for a superb Roiga save by their keeper, we will still have a corner here though. Pablo to whip in the ball, Galaretta underneath it, but unable to be picked out. And, uh, well, it remains 1-0 for now, but we look very, very sharp to start this game. And this highlight is just going on. I mean, could this lead to back-to-back -back highlights? No, no, it's not going to. Of course, I knew it was going to end. Why did I pretend otherwise? Throwing deep in our own half here. It's going to be Zivkovic at right back with the ball at his feet. Go short to Kapanu. Could switch the play here. We've got a little bit of an advantage if we can move it quickly. Blanco's going to have it in the midfield. He's actually going to dink it to Avramides. That was not the simplest of passes he elected to go for there, but he's picked out his man well. It's put, played him perfectly, and Pablo should have scored that. Smashed it straight at the Leon defender. He didn't have a Scooby-Doo what was going on the defender. Unfortunately for us, they've got it away from danger, and Velez 
heads over. And well, he's headed over and it's just gone straight into another highlight. It's a goal kick. We're going to try and apply some pressure high up the pitch. But as you can see here, Leon playing out of the press quite nicely here. Still in a situation where if they were to give the ball away like this, we can maybe spring a counter-attack. Avramides, wide to Zivkovic. A little bit of space for the right back here to pick out his pass. Blanco hits the woodwork. Brian Hill gets the rebound on this occasion, and he does find the back of the net. We're 2-0 up here. We look superb going forward. And, uh, well, I've got to be honest. If Blanco had scored here, it would have been one of the goal of the seasons, I feel like, on the volley like that. So, so unfortunate. I don't know if Roiga could have done a little better in goal for them there with the rebound, but we're not going to complain. Brian scores. It's 2-0. Another highlight starting at the back here. Ramadani going short to Galaretta. Both teams look like they want to play out from the back. Avramides, he wants to have a run at their defence. He doesn't care. Maybe he should, should care a little bit more. That was awful. I don't even know what to say about that. Was that meant to be a shot? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, at halftime, you can have a more one-sided game. They haven't had a shot yet. They've actually had slightly more of the ball, but we have just absolutely bullied them here. I am very pleased with how it's going, folks. Keep it going into the second half. Wouldn't mind a third goal. That would certainly calm the nerves, of course. Just as a reminder, a win here, and we're through. We're into the knockouts of the Champions League in a lot more convincing fashion than we were last year, might I add. Kasper Dolberg out in the wide area for them. They've got Pippi in the middle as well. Ball played forward. I mean, if they scored early in this half, it really could be a, a game changer. It could really change the complexion of this tie. If we get a third, you'd imagine that would be the misery compiler. And well, Angelino there has not put in a very good tackle. I imagine this is going to be given as a penalty. It looked stonewall on the face of it. Avramides is struggling a little bit. Hopefully he's not picked up too much of a knock. VAR's going to give it. And now all eyes are on Siapena, or as some fans have started to call him, Siapena. Because he always scores penalties and he scores another one there. We are 3-0 up here. A free kick, a nice goal from open play, albeit a rebound, and now a penalty. A little bit of variety in the goals today. And it's nice to just watch the goals flow I was kind of hoping that the game was going to fizzle out into nothingness. You know, we could have our 3-0 and settle, but Leon looked like they've got other ideas here as they knock it around nicely. And loser, I mean, he's not a loser, is he? He's just scored an absolute screamer. He's a winner with a finish like that. I'm not sure I can blame Ramadani there. He had some absolute hero heroics when we beat Manchester United. He actually got man of the match in that game and had, I think, 12 saves. I think you could have put two Ramadanis in goal there. They aren't stopping that. That was some strike. I mean, I'm scared of loser. Don't let him shoot. Even from 40 yards out, I'm now scared. Hatabor, bringing the ball forward. His cross is blocked, but it goes back wide to him with a fortuitous bounce. Loser now with the ball. He dinks it in. Velez heads it away. Kasper Dolberg, back to Pippi. Plays it back to Dolberg. Zivkovic, what was that? Oh my word, what are we witnessing here? I just need, we need to have a little shout here, lads. I could, I could encourage them. I could be supportive. That's not my style of loving. I'm going to be demanding. I need more from you, lads. I will look to do some subs, I think, after this highlight. I mean, if we could make it 4-1, that would help me relax a little bit. Blanco, go right. Does go right. Zivkovic, Avramides, back to Zivkovic. Pablo bends it into the bottom corner. Zivkovic with another assist today. Pablo wills away with a cartwheel. 4-1. And, well, after Leon scored with their first shot of the game, I did worry. I'm going to tell you now, I think this game is done. I think we're okay. We can all relax. Remain calm, everyone. So I am going to make some subs here. Velez is struggling a little bit, but I don't really like changing my centre-backs. We'll bring on Corridor, I think. We'll bring in Martinez as well for Avramides, just to help, hopefully, Martinez get some match sharpness back. And you know what? Calderon's been out for a little while. We'll bring him in on the left-hand side. He's been out with an injury. Um, that injury, if we remember, was a torn back muscle. That doesn't sound particularly pleasant. So he's missed a little bit of football. He's declined a little bit as a player. Um, I feel like this is a relatively risk-free scenario to bring him on 25 minutes, let him show us what we're made of. And uh, well, Corridor's on the pitch, and Corridor can score bangers, as can Blanco. Laid to Calderon. He lays it to the on rushing Perez at left back. Back to Blanco. Dinks in. Siapina. Pablo nearly had the hat trick. That was not far wide. At 4-1, I thought I could relax, but if they made it 4-2, I, I just don't I don't like this way they're not going down without a fight. 
Oh my word, Ramadani. I don't know what that save was, but the ball isn't in the back of the net. We're not going to question the technique. At least not on this occasion. Angelino gave away a penalty, needs a bit of a redemption. That is not how to do it. Straight down the throat of Ramadani. He collects. Still 4-1 for now. Lang gives it forward. Alberto is going to give chase, but not get there. I mean, 5-1 would be good, wouldn't it? I don't want to get carried away. 5-1 would be pretty impressive. Galaretta, can you help us get there? Forsby to Pippi. Now with Loser, who is quite a good footballer, it turns out. Oh, my word. Is that not offside? Is that not off? It is off. Okay, I was worried for a second. That would have been a weird goal had that gone in. Selic at the back for Leon, laying it inside to Pippi. Now with Lucas Piqueta. They've got creativity, haven't they, in this team, Leon? They've not really shown that today. Maybe that's a, a compliment to our defence as much as anything else. As Yuri Alberto is going to be well, put through, and that's going to be offside. That is not going to count, ladies and gentlemen, not for the first time. He's got a little bit keen there, and he's found himself in an offside position. It remains 4-1. We're fine. We've had 27 shots. Like sometimes you win 4-1 and you've had an XG of like 1.5. In this game, we have had so many chances. We've created just a massive quantity of them. And well, so have Leon, to be fair. So they have another effort that does not go far wide of the post. I say they've created a lot. They've had highlights. Let's be they've had highlights. They've had six shots in total. Let's not try and compare them to us. I think what we can all agree on there is. We, we did deserve to win that one. Pablo Torre was top draw. 4-1 it finishes. And with that, we're through to the knockout stages of the Champions League. Also, Manchester United just lost to Napoli, courtesy of a last-minute goal, which means with a game to spare, we're guaranteed to be top of the group. I did not expect to be saying that at the end of this first match. That is absolutely fantastic news. We qualify for the first round, but as first seeds, we will be taking on a team who finished second in one of the other groups, which it isn't necessarily a surefire way to get an easier game, but it ups the odds of it. We've done the best that we can do, and we also get £2.5 million for winning. Pablo Torre, take a bow. You were superb in front of goal. Um, I'm kind of surprised that Bayern Munich aren't looking at him thinking, hmm, maybe he could do a job for us in the Champions League, but... He's ours. We're going to make the most of him. Anyway, we're only three days away from the game against Atleti. It's going to be second versus fourth, a defeat against them, and they could leapfrog us. We wouldn't want that. We're going to get to it, give the players a rest. Hopefully, we can come back rejuvenated and put in a similar performance to the one that we just saw there, because that was pretty top draw. Okay, folks, we're back. We've got Atleti coming up next. I feel like I'm a little too excited today. I know I thought about after that last match and I was sat thinking, was that too energetic? I don't know. I'm full of beans today. I'm very excited. I'm enjoying this save game. And I love the fact two of our better young players have signed long-term deals with the club. Uh, the first is Jorge Calderon, who, of course, came through the academy. I'm showing a little bit of faith in him because he has had some issues with injuries. Um, but I feel like he's 19 years old loads of potential, homegrown at club. We need to pledge our allegiances to him. I make it sound like he's some kind of cult leader here. Um, so as a result, he signed a new deal. It's five years long with an optional three-year extension and a massive release clause. I don't think anyone's going to trigger it at 500 million. If they do, they are allowed to have him. They have my permission. Um, nevertheless, though, it's uh, you know not an outrageous wage, I think, at 20,000, especially in our current situation we're locking down one of our best players for eight years. Um, the other player who signed a long-term deal is Miguel Salgado. Um, was a little bit of talk that we might sell him in the summer. In the end, we didn't. And I'm kind of glad that we didn't. I think he's a really useful squad player to have. He's a super well-rounded defender. And with the exception of his aggression, there's not really a massive gap in his game. Uh, as a squad player, as a backup, he's good. A five-year deal for a player who's 21 is always nice just to lock him down for the foreseeable future. It means that if there is some interest in him, we can point at the length of his contract and say, hey, give us all your money. And hopefully teams will bid that little bit more for him in the end. I think it makes sense for both parties to get him on a longer deal. So one other thing just before we get into the Atleti game. Today as you watch this, it's Monday. I've recorded this a little bit in advance because uh, yesterday as you watch the video, uh, I will have had my second COVID jab, my second vaccine. So 
I'm recording ahead on the assumption that I might feel under the weather. Um, so if you want to leave a, a loving and supportive comment for Jack, you might be struggling. I don't, tell me your favourite joke in the comments. That, uh, that'll cheer him up. Him up. I'm talking about myself in the third person. The Jack universe is getting too broad to track at this point. But yes, just as a reminder, looking at the league table now, Atleti, three points behind us. We take them on. A win here could do us a world of good. And of course, we've still got the unbeaten season on the cards. Could it happen? Probably won't. Let, let's try and keep it going for as long as we can, though, shall we? Going into this second game, a little bit of rotation needed. Calderon comes in for Pablo Torre, who just isn't fit enough to play. Elsewhere, Mark's going to come in at right back because Perez is struggling at left back. Zivkovic then reverts back to his left back position. And elsewhere, we've got Vega slotting in at box to box midfielder. Um, I really like Vega. I know I say this a lot and people kind of always leave in the comments. He looks very unremarkable. I feel like all box to box midfielders in Football Manager are unremarkable. What I will say is he rarely puts Puts a foot wrong. Um, knowing my look today, he will now make an absolute clangor off the back of that comment. I must admit, it still feels weird going into a game like this one without having players like Mahika in the starting 11. Just an ever-present part of the team for so many years, but Siapina's kind of come in and stolen his thunder. It feels like a little bit. We've got him on the bench as a super sub, but as has been the way this year for a fair amount of the kind of season, we've not ever really needed a super sub. Most of the time we control games reasonably well, and well, we've had one great result today. I will hope for a similarly great result here at home against Atleti. They're in fourth, we're in second. This is pretty big. Corner. It's going to be Ryan Hill to whip it in towards Velez, and that is what we want to see. Uh, going into this, I was sat thinking, hmm, I wonder if this will be like the game against Leon. I wouldn't mind... A karma match. I don't know if it is going to be any karma. We're less than three minutes into the game. And, well, the deadlock's been broken. It's been Velez with the header. It will have just shown on your screen how many goals he scored this season. I can't remember the exact amount, but it's a lot. Asensio now with the ball. Correa to Luis Diaz. Goes to Alfonso Davis, is that? Plays it through to Werner, and that's a very tidy finish. It's seven minutes gone. And it's 1-1. One, one. This is this is not going to be a quiet game, is it? This is not good. This is just not going to be a quiet game. I might as well accept it now. I mean, Werner's scored. Make of that what you will. Elsewhere, Barcelona losing 1-0. Oh, we don't we don't mind to see that here. They're top of the league. A slip up for them could be big for either team playing in this match. Since the opening two goals, this game has slowed down a little bit, which I'm a little bit relieved about. It feels like last year was a season of one nils and scraping by. This is just a year of goal fiestas. Atleti has scored two at our stadium playing against us, which, I mean, in a bizarre way, I feel I need to applaud them for because no one really does this. Generally speaking, we're solid at the back and yet somehow Timo Werner's grabbed two in this game. Berg with the ball forward, knocked down by Luis Diaz and then Werner on the volley. I mean, I'd be singing and dancing if that was my striker with that finish. When it's their striker, it's just a little bit annoying. I'm hoping that that's all that we're going to see in terms of their striker doing business as well. We have the ball now. Vega is dispossessed, but it's still with Brian, who decides that Saul Miguez is the, the best player to give the ball to there. Not sure about that pass, but we'll let it slide for now. If they score from it, I might not let it slide. Werner's through. This time, Ramadani does make a stop. That's a more familiar sight. I feel like for so long, Ramadani's been the, the goalkeeper who stops everything. In this game, it's not really felt like that, but maybe he's found his form as well he plucks the ball from the air there. And uh, with it, ensures safety for now. Our black goal kick. Going to be launched forward onto the far side. Zivkovic, of course, back in his left-back position now. Back in his natural habitat. Going to clear up the mess. It's now with Velez. Goes back to Ramadani. He goes long to Brian Hill. That was a really nice ball forward. Vega back to Zivkovic. I don't mind a little bit of sustained possession. This is quite nice to watch, isn't it? Siapina, options to his left in Brian Hill, who now has Zivkovic on the overlap. This has been beautiful. A goal at the end of this could be a goal of the season contender. And while there is going to be a goal at the end of it, Avramides on the volley, ghosting in from out on that right-hand side. And well, I decided after the previous game that I was just going to stick with Brian Hill on the left and then Avramides on the right, and that decision seems to have worked out pretty nicely. Zivkovic in the wide area, whips it in, Avramides just sneaks in at the near post, gets his toe on it. It's 2-2, and it's not even half-time yet. 
Set at half time, 2 2 is the scoreline. There's not been loads of shots in this game. There's not been loads of chances, but the chances that have been created have been taken. Both teams putting on an absolute clinic. You can see here, Atleti started kind of the better of the two sides. As soon as they got their second goal, though, only one shot throughout the rest of the half, and we definitely grew into it. Hopefully, we're going to be able to keep that kind of momentum and that swing of play going into this second half now. You can see they're playing this 4-4-1-1, which Atleti have played for a lot of this kind of save game, it feels like. Generally, I feel like we match up quite nicely against it, as Brian Hill is going to whip in a ball the way of Galaretta. It's cleared away to Capanu. What can Capanu do, though? He gives it to Velez. Galaretta. It's rare for us to have a corner that doesn't kind of result in a Velez or Galaretta headed goal, I feel like, when it starts a highlight. Which makes me wonder where we're going here. This is this is uncharted territory, ladies and gentlemen. We don't have a map. I can't guarantee you safety. But it should be entertaining one way or the other. As the ball is played through to Sia Pina. Mark at right back has come back into the team. He's having a great season for a backup right back. I feel guilty I'm not playing him more. And we talk about Sia Pina and his heading ability quite a lot. He's quick as well. He's just, he's a complete forward. I mean, I hate to just use a, a role to define him. He is just a complete forward. He's absolutely everywhere. That was a superb finish just before the hour mark. We take the lead in this game. I was about to make a change, but another highlight started. Velez, near post, makes it 4-2, and we can breathe a mighty sigh of relief. Atleti looking very, very susceptible from set pieces in this game. Um, I think Velez... Is Velez on now on for the hat-trick? He's, sco he's already scored in this game, right? It feels like a long time ago he did. He did. Right, Velez is on for a hat-trick. Would I let him take a penalty if it came to it? Probably would at this point. I'm getting carried away. Right, Martinez, in you come. Elsewhere, we're going to bring in, I think, Mahika for Siapina, just for a bit of rotation. And I, I feel like... I don't know, Siapina's probably going to feel a bit hard done by to be subbed off here, but I need to give Mahika minutes. We know that he can do it. Elsewhere, Barcelona, unfortunately for us, are now 3-1 up in their game, so that's not really going the way we need it to go. And now, that's not going the way we need it to go, as Werner just got a hat-trick. He's just got a hat-trick. Am I going to regret taking off Avramides and Siapina? Discuss. Ah, that's... I mean, it's not great. It's not great. I'm going to level with yet. Yeah, that's not great defending. 20 minutes and it's 4-3. I don't know if I can handle this. Brian Hill, deep free kick, whipped forward, headed away. Seven minutes left, everyone. Can we hold on? And 3-1 up, I should be relaxed. I should be happy. But the way this game's gone, we may well need a fifth. This episode has been pretty relentless. As Calderon has an effort from range, Oblak saves it, though. Maybe a tad ambitious from the youngster there. He is wearing the captain's armband. He has got good leadership, has Calderon. He's come through the ranks. I've made him vice-captain. And while Mahika should finish that, hits the woodwork, and I hope we're not going to live to regret that, because that was a prime opportunity. And you can see now, they are just throwing men forward. I'm not risking it. I'm not risking it. If they want to throw men forward, we will throw men back. Don't think that's a term, but I'm going with it. Right, time waste, wingbacks on defend. Four minutes of added time. Surely it's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. Right, breathe a sigh of relief, everyone. You can relax. We've got two huge wins today. This one particularly big. And, uh, well, best performer was Brian Hill for us. He was top quality, to be fair, in terms of his deliveries into the box for corners. Velez was very good at the back when it came to getting his head, head on things for goals. And we've got a massive win there. Elsewhere, did Real Madrid lose? Oh, my word. Vallecano did us a favour. Real Madrid in this save game have been a bit of a force. They've lost this game 2-1. They've lost, you can see here, against PSV recently. They lost against Barcelona. And against Valladolid, I need to talk about this game. Oh, I didn't know if I'd ever talk about it. I'm going to. Real Madrid were winning 1-0 in the 93rd minute. And Valladolid scored two in extra time. I mean... Thank you, Valladolid. And thank you to everyone else who seems to be ganging up against Real Madrid and causing them to drop points. They are seven points behind Barcelona now. Uh, equally, Atleti are now nine points behind them, so they are losing ground two. Maybe, just maybe, this little run of Real Madrid dominance over the last couple of years is nearing an end. Prior to this year, they'd lost three games in two seasons. They were pretty good, really.
But anyway, folks, that is going to wrap up everything from us today. That was a relentless experience of an episode. The matches were bonkers. In terms of next time, the Napoli game now has absolutely no meaning. Uh, so with that in mind, we're going to come back when we take on Barcelona in La Liga. And we've also got the Super Copper against Atleti. So we might do that as a double header. The issue is if I then get to the Super Copper final. But as we established last season, the Super Copper really doesn't matter. I don't know. Maybe I'll come back for the Sebi final. Maybe we'll just do the Barcelona game and throw in some transfer stuff for good measure. The transfer window is opening in just over a month's time. We've got 102 million in the bank, a little bit of wage budget, a little bit of transfer budget. Secretly hoping the board are going to look at the bank balance and realise, hey, we have money. We can give you some more money to spend. Whether or not Mr. Alfredo Perez decides to do that, I suppose remains to be seen. Right, that is next episode kind of planned. I hope to see you guys for it. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I hope it wasn't too energetic, but it was just a very enjoyable. But I've just had fun. I'm having fun with this save game. I'm really loving the players. I'm loving the team. I think that comes through in the videos and well, hopefully you're continuing to enjoy it as well. I'll see you tomorrow. Take care. And until then, it is me, Jack, and I'll talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.